Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghost and Spirits series of videos. So once again, let's go ahead and we'll start a whole new series here. Based on your suggestions, I decided to start it a little bit earlier than usual because some of the suggestions that were coming in, the information related to them is pretty good. So really looking forward to doing the rest of the videos this go around. I do already have also the video set for my trip to the downtown Driscoll or Driscoll Hotel, so be on the lookout for that soon too. Now this suggestion is very fascinating because it has to do with a ghost that has a legendary tale associated with it. In fact, it is so legendary that to this very day, where this ghost, I guess, frequents or where it haunts, there's an annual festival dedicated to this ghost. Can you believe that? Like there's an actual festival associated with it and it's there in Australia. So it's quite fascinating to see the lore uh, tied to this ghost. Um, I can't think of any other ghost that seems to have that particular trait. And what I'm talking about is the ghost that's known as Fisher's Ghost, although other times it's called the Fisher's Ghost Creek because of the location that it's that it that it haunts to this very day so what is Fisher's ghost well it has to do with a ghost of a man that was murdered back in the 1800s uh, for starters though let's talk about where it's located you have to go to Australia in particular a town called Campbellton Australia there in New South Wales there used to be a creek a stream of some sort that ran through that town and I guess the way the information read because of flooding that creek became a uh, little change like in other words there was a drain a water drain added to it and you're looking at it here so for all intents and purposes this seems to be the location of the ghost like where it frequents um, at least to this day is, is this the actual location of the murder or what you'll find out associated with the murder here in a few minutes I don't know but this I guess we'll utilize it as the location of the ghost so if you're ever there in Australia in particular Campbelltown and there in New South Wales and you happen to be around that creek it's called the Bow Burring Bunbury Creek um, then that is where this ghost is located so here's the story that's tied to it you have to go back again to the 1800s there was a guy by the name of Fred Fisher there in 1826 he was a former convict who lived there in Campbellton and when that whenever he was there no longer leaving or leading in this case the the life of a felon he decided to own a land and he made it pretty successful um, apparently he was one of the first people there in New South Wales to create and introduce paper in that area well lo and behold through just sheer happen chance he had a neighbor another ex-convict so another former convict by the guy in the name of George Worrell and then two, I guess, either competed against another uh, or had some kind of, I guess, rivalry of some sort. But in either case, in George Worrell's uh, circumstance, his business, whatever he was doing, was not quite as successful as Fisher. So whatever he was doing with his land didn't quite hit off with Fisher's. Now, somewhere along the way, though, Fisher got into a little bit of debt, so it seems like his success was kind of short-lived. And in order to ensure that his beloved land could not be taken away, he actually had it, and these are the words, signed over to George Worrell. Now, I don't know how exactly he signed it over. Um, maybe in the 1800s, a little different. Nowadays, of course, you have to have uh, a deed or some kind of title uh, associated with someone else. But in this case, it was official enough to ensure that Fisher did not have the land seized from him. Instead, it was given, I guess, to this guy Worrell while Fisher uh, was battling this out with the courts. Whatever his debt was, he was trying to take care of it to ensure that, again, his land could not be taken from him. Well, obviously, uh, whatever the form of law was there at that time, they decided that this was a clear case of him just by cutting and bypassing laws and debts in order to ensure his land's not taken they took him into custody i guess they found him guilty of evading uh what, whatever kind of debt was linked to him and tied to his land and so because of this they sent him to him to six months in prison so there he was 
back again in prison. But I guess in under his case, he was with the comfort of knowing that this guy George Worrell, his neighbor, could take care of the land for him because he did sign it over to him. Remember, that way once he got out of prison, then he could have the land back. Well, it cut to about six months later, Fred Fisher finally got out of prison. The very first thing that he did was he found his neighbor, George Worrell. But unfortunately, this guy Worrell changed things like he actually said that nope this land is mine now absolutely it is mine you signed it over again I don't know if there was any kind of contract deed trust whatever but he, it was signed over to him and he was not giving up that land and this was because again as I mentioned a couple minutes earlier uh, George Worrell's business never quite hit off as much as Fisher's and so he grew quite jealous of it he wanted to own that land he probably saw it as the land itself being successful and so he was not giving it up so somewhere during that time period it's still the information is a little bit hazy but somewhere during that time period that neighbor George Roll decided he's gonna keep that land permanently he's not gonna have anyone take it especially Fred Fisher and so because of it he killed him right by that creek who knows how he killed him uh, most likely like it seems to be with a lot of uh, murder cases some people just they just get whacked from behind like they get hit really hard from behind in their head and then that's it that's that's how they go down so in either case George World took that body of Fred Fisher and then buried it somewhere deep within that creek so Cut to a little while later, and George Worrell was just living life as normal. He actually started wearing Fisher's clothes. And then on top of that, he was telling people that as soon as Fisher had gotten out of prison, because by then, people were wondering, you know, where's Fred at? Well, I know he got out of prison, but he hasn't been around. Um, this guy Worrell started telling people that as soon as he got out of prison, he went back to England. And that he had signed over the land to him. Not only that, but he had given him power of attorney as well. And then on top of that... He he had given him, in, uh, these are the words, an indefinite lease to his land. And then even on top of that, this guy Worrell started to sell some of Fisher's possessions. That seemed to be, though, the, I guess, the crux of it. Because once he started to sell Fisher's actual things, including apparently like a prized horse of some sort, then people knew something was up. I mean, Fisher, this guy Fred Fisher, would, it would not have given up some of those prized possessions just out of the blue even with um, all the stuff that this guy Worrell was stating. So whenever people started to get even more suspicious, and obviously Fisher was not showing up for some time, um, he finally said that, no, uh, Fred Fisher, he took a ship called the Lost Saints Vincent, um, and that's why he left. That's the proof that you had. That he even forged a letter telling him that he was all right in England, that he was vacationing or doing whatever far away in England, and that he would uh, most unlikely ever return to Australia. Obviously, people were getting very, very suspicious by that point. Well, four months after Fisher's murder, there was a guy by the name of John Farley. He apparently lived near that area. He was coming across a bridge, and whenever he came across the bridge after a visit, I guess, to a pub, then lo and behold, he saw a ghostly image of some sort. It was a man. It was a ghost of a man. And according to this guy, John Farley, he saw the ghost look like Fred Fisher, like it was his ghost, in other words. And the way he stated it, the ghost did nothing at all. It simply looked at him and then pointed straight to the creek where he was killed. I'm not telling him, of course, that that's where he was killed there, but one could surmise that based on an ominous point that yes that that's what he was indicating so this guy John Farley he ran back to the pub I think it was in a hotel of some sort he told everyone what had happened and then that's when people started to add 2 plus 2 so uh, the police in that area launched an official investigation and then they got this other guy this is where it got a little weird according to the story named George Luland they brought him over to the creek that the that this guy John Farley said that the ghost pointed towards he actually tasted the water I don't know how I guess he does this but he tasted the water and he said that he could quote unquote taste the fat of a white fellow so apparently he could taste the fact that there was a decomposing body maybe of some sort and he could taste the fat from it there so whatever he said it was convincing enough to allow people 
to start searching that area. They did it by pushing rods down into the creek, I guess, trying to find a solid hit of some sort amongst all that mud. And lo and behold, sure enough, they discovered the buried body of Fred Fisher. So it seems like there was a quick trial because cut to about a week later after finding that body, they found him guilty and then they hung this guy, George Worrell. And that was that. So you got one guy's jealousy, in this case George Worrell, over Fred Fisher's land and his success. You had Fred Fisher falling under bad circumstances and then giving that land over to Worrell while he himself was kind of trying to do something I guess not so right just trying to evade uh, his debt and then on top of that he goes to jail comes back they have that fight he gets killed and then lo and behold this guy Farley uh, this guy John Farley finds the ghost of Fred Fisher and that's where you have his mystery uh, of, of where he disappeared to being solved at least according to all the legends tied to uh, this ghost story but now and uh, there's a new festival that's been happening every single year it's called Fisher's Ghost Festival apparently here that's where the people of that town celebrate the legend uh, tied to this ghost story and they celebrate it you'll see pictures of it here clearly like they are it's almost like a Halloween party of some sort um, w with the way that they're dressed the way that they have stuff painted on their faces um, it seems like they're doing it both as an honor to this guy Fisher and to ensure that the story continues to go forward even after all these years which is a good number of years again this happened somewhere around the uh, 1826 maybe around the you know late 20s maybe early 30s or so uh, with regards to his ghost appearing so almost 200 years of existence when it comes to this goes but otherwise yeah pretty fascinating stuff don't you guys think um, with regards to the story the idea that this legend uh, and, and spawned a festival that people celebrate that's what makes it so fascinating to me and then also the idea that you can visit that creek because to this very day this guy's ghost apparently still haunts that location he appears sporadically um, if someone especially tries to search for his ghost around that creek then that's when he appears either right there or he sits on a bridge um, and then either looks at someone or does anything else nothing really bad it seems like with regards to his encounters he just appears especially if people start searching for him that's what makes it pretty fascinating too so if anyone has any more information with regards to this legendary ghost story that would be really great to hear too if anyone has been there as well and happens to have had an um, or known someone that has an experience that would be really great too so right everybody thanks again as always take care